Sorry, I was about to take a sip and the smell. I think this is the strong one. That just hit me in the face. <laughs> We're Mateo and Misha. We are currently pursuing our goal of pulling off the ultimate Italian road trip, traveling to all 20 regions of Italy. And we've started off in Sicily. In our last episode, we took on the unpredictable weather of Sicily in October, as we visited the seaside towns of Scapello, San Vitolo Capo, and Castello Mare del Golfo. Today, we continue our journey on the windiest side of Sicily, famous for their expansive salt pans, strong wines, and ancient traditions, we explore what makes Marsala such a special place. We've made it to Marsala. Marsala is famous for its wine production, as well as being the landing spot for where Giuseppe Caraboldi and his thousand men landed on the 11th of May, 1860, in order to retake Sicily in the unification of Italy. We weren't too sure what to expect from coming to Marsala. It feels very small and cozy, and it just has a really lovely vibe. We thought it was gonna storm today, but the sun has come out and the sky is blue. It's a beautiful day. Mateo and I's preferred method of meals is getting a takeaway and usually finding a cute place to eat it. It was only six bucks for these two paninis and a bottle of water and they taste delicious. This place is really good. We thought it was gonna be expensive because it was right in the center of town, but these are huge. This is only half of it and it was two bucks. Only in Italy could you have ancient ruins sitting here in the middle of the city and right above them a nursery. I'll give it to Marsala. This town here in Italy seems to be the one with the most children I've ever seen. Earlier some guy laughed and told us that it's because there is a lack of TV. You go, Glen Coco. We're about to leave Marsala and head to one of the vineyards. Our take on Marsala, if you come around October and during the middle of the day, be careful of the siesta because most of the town actually seems like it's like closed. Yeah, summer too, they siesta. But if you wanna stop for lunch or a coffee or something for an hour and a half, it's a really nice place to grab a snack and take a little stroll about town because it is very cute. It's just very small. But now we're heading about two miles down the road to a vineyard to try the Marsala wine. After searching for the vineyard that seems to be closed and you have to book tours and that which we didn't kind of prepare for, we finally have arrived at the Malsala Salt Flats. And unsurprisingly, it smells like salt, but it's awesome. They have these giant windmills, these 
these huge domes of sand. Salt. Salt. <laughs> it's just a really cool landscape. This is the Inversa windmill. It dates back to the 16th century and is a star-shaped windmill, fashioned after the famous Dutch-style windmills. The ponds here at the salt pans operate a little bit differently to what one would think. Instead of just having one massive pool of salt water that will evaporate over time, the pond here has been divided into individual little ponds. Each pond has a different depth and that causes the water to be different temperatures. The deeper ponds are the first stage of the salt evaporation process. As they pass through the different ponds, the water gets shallower and the water becomes more dense with salt until the last stage where the water is essentially evaporated and the thick ponds of salt are left behind. And from here, the salt can be harvested. From April to May, the water is let inside the pools and that's where they start the evaporation process. The salt forms in thick layers on the bottom of the pools and when it's ready to be harvested, they crack it open with a special tool and then gather it up with spades and put it into wheelbarrows where they push it to the edges and put it in these salt mounds where it gets crushed up into a finer powder and ready to be sold. From what I understand, there is one man that looks after this entire salt pan. He is referred to as the salt master and he is in charge of this pan because it's been passed down from generation to generation and he just happens to be the guy in charge today. Something really interesting is that the windmills and the mechanisms in them are mostly made out of wood, not metal, because if they were made out of metal, the salt would rust them and break them down a lot faster. When you come inside the windmill, you can go up this set of stairs and come to the second floor to get a view, so I'm really excited to see what it looks like. The view from the top of the windmill is crazy. You can see a bunch of salt mounds. You can see all the lagoons. It's almost like they just keep going as far as the eye can see. It's an incredible view. There's like kite surfers over there. It's awesome. And you're right under the windmill. This thing is massive. Next to the salt mounds behind me, you can see a whole stack of roof tiles. And what we've learned is that these salt mounds are left to dry in the summer sun and late summer. But when winter comes around, they cover all the salt mounds with these roof tiles and create this little hibernation station for each salt mound. The windmill wings are made out of wood and as you can see there's no covering on them. So what they do is that the top of the windmill can fully rotate 360 degrees depending on where the wind is coming from. And what they do is that once they've got in the position that they want it, they put sails on the wings and that's what catches the wind. So without the sails it doesn't turn, with the sails they can get it to spin. And the wind drives propellers to help crush the salt as well as pump water from one pond to another using something called a Archimedes screw. So we tried to go to one of the wineries earlier to try the Marsala wine, but we didn't know you had to book a tour. So unfortunately we weren't able to do it there. Luckily though, this little restaurant right next to the salt pans has the wine. So we got two different kinds. One of them is strong and one of them is really strong, somewhere between like 16 and 19%. I'm not sure which one's which, so this is gonna be a fun game. <laughs> this one does look darker though, I think. I don't know if it's the light. And we got it with the aperitivo. So we have some almonds, some olives, some chips, these little, I'm assuming that's a little potato ball. And if you saw our Palermo street food video, you know that this is a panella. So it's like a chickpea fritter. 
So it's a white Marsala grape mixed with some other ingredients and it's apparently a must try when you're here. So I'm actually excited to see what it tastes like. I don't know if this is the strong one or the really strong one. So let's see. <sighs> Sorry, I was about to take a sip and this smelled. I think this is the strong one that just hit me in the face. <laughs> this one smells like the strong one. not gonna lie, kinda tastes like hard liquor. I'm really scared if this isn't the strong one. <laughs> okay, this one tastes a little bit sweeter. This one I think tasted really tart to me. This one's sweeter, but it still tastes like hard liquor, so. I think I prefer this one though. I think this might be the, the milder one. Yeah, this one looks darker. This one looks lighter. Michelle said this is the strong one, so let's give it a try. Wow, that is hectic. It's like a, it is, it's like having a rum shot, but like half the potency mixed with a bit of wine. It's actually really good though, I kind of like it. So weird. Good, but weird. Next one. <laughs> that one's definitely a bit better, isn't it? Like, not as potent, a little bit sweeter. Both pretty delicious. This is hectic. So the sweet is the youngest. Yeah. Middle. Later, middle, oh, the middle that the one. strongest, the older. Yeah. The, the middle is the middle one. Okay. okay. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes that sense. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> right, cool. From my brief Marsala wine research, from what I understand, the stronger they are, the longer they've been aged. This one's strong, that one not as strong. Sweet one even less strong. Got it? Good. There's your history on Marsala wine research. It's a white marsala grape mixed with a bunch of other ingredients and it goes back in the day to the 1700s as to when it was invented. Look at this backdrop, come on. In our next episode, we feel what life was like over a hundred years ago as we explore one of Sicily's hidden gems and the lesser visited Scurati Caves.